Good afternoon to our online community. Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our session on our pre-engineering program, our Ask UE session on our pre-engineering program. My name is Nataki Kerr. I am the manager of brand and student recruitment marketing at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. And it is my pleasure to be here and to host all of you this afternoon. I see we have about 15 to 20 persons signing in and we expect quite a few persons to sign up for our, um, who signed up for our session to be here with us this evening. So we welcome all of you. We are happy that you are here. And just as a little background, our Arc TV sessions have been designed to have a quick 45 minutes or so online session for those of you who want to apply to the University of the West Indies St. Augustine for us to come and chat with you about all our various programs from time to time and give you an opportunity to ask all the questions you want asked to make sure that you have all the information you need to sign up with us because our deadline date for applications is July 31st, 2024. So we are happy to be here with you. And again, welcome to all our attendees. With us this afternoon is our pre-engineering team. We have our online chat team and we also have Dr. Rochelle Adams who will be presenting in a short while so that we have our team here waiting to answer all your questions. As I mentioned, our session today will be about 45 minutes or so. And you can ask your questions in our chat. You can use your raise hand tool and wait to be recognized. You can also ask your questions uh, online if you want. We would love to hear your voice. We would love to interact with you. So you have the choice and you have the power of asking your questions in the chat. Or you can voice your questions. You can type them in quickly and our team will be sure to get to you as soon as possible. With regards to our agenda today, we have Dr. Adams who will come online in a minute to just let you know more about the program. She will let you know what career opportunities there are. She will also let you know what are the requirements of the program so you'll know what exactly you need to be able to apply and to sign up with us. And as soon as she's finished presenting, we will open the floor to answer all your questions. So at this point in time, again, welcome to our Ask Siri session. And I would turn you over to Dr. Adams, who will now do a brief presentation about our pre-engineering program. Dr. Adams. Hi, good afternoon, everyone. Um, thank you so much for joining us this afternoon, taking time out to know more about this program. And I'll just go straight into the presentation. So I'll be sharing my screen. Hold on for a second. I trust that you have seen my screen. Yes, we are. Full mode. All right. So basically, um, and hopefully this link is working, this QR code is working. So that should go straight to the pre-engineering website where you'll get additional information um, as we go. So, right. So let me just remove this here. Okay. So I know the main issue for us, the main thing is to get into the undergraduate program, which is the BSc engineering program for those, I, I believe for most persons who are logged in right now. And um, to be very transparent, there are many ways in, in um, of getting into that program. So you have CAPE, which is a traditional route. Um, students would have done CSEC and then would have done at least two years um, in terms of the advanced level. Um, and we look at specific or uh, specific subjects for engineering, particularly physics, pure math, applied math, and chemistry, if you want to do chemical engineering at the advanced level. So that's a traditional route. And in fact, many people come through that, through that means. Um, some students or some prospective students go through pre-science, right? So that is in the Faculty of Science and Technology. And uh, we call it traditionally N1 program, and they would do subjects as um, at the zero level, which are like mathematics and physics or some combination thereof. Some students may come in through our um, tertiary level institutions, such as UTT, um, University of Trinidad and Tobago here, in Trinidad and Tobago, and then across the Caribbean, for example, we have the Barbados Community College, we have the Surat and Lewis Community College in, um, in, in St. Lucia and so on. So across the Caribbean, people come in. 
an, an additional route is the pre-engineering program. And I will go and that one I will talk to more today. But if you need a little idea about the others, I can probably give you some, but not probably all the details, right? So the focus is on the pre-engineering program. And the main reason for this program is to help you get into or qualify for entry into the BSc engineering programs. Okay, my machine is not advancing. <laughs> so see if well further. I'm trying to um okay, so I may have to stop share a little bit and then come back in because my um oh now it's advancing. That's right. That's what to do. <laughs> All right, so let me go back again. All right, so good. So just to give you some idea as to what the entry requirements are for the undergraduate program, we have a point system here in engineering based on the type of qualification you have and the level at which you gain that qualification. So as an example, for more details, there's a faculty handbook, um, which we could do, you could do a very quick Google on and you, it will come up um, automatically just to UE, um, Faculty of Engineering Handbook, and it will come up, and all the details in terms of entry requirements will be listed there. But I wanted to give an example as to how we actually calculate those points based on what grade you would have gotten, for example, in Cape. And this is very important because I know some persons, they would have attempted Cape and may not have, um, may have applied for entry into one of our undergraduate programs, and it was not that successful. And they want to know why it is that they did not meet the threshold. And we're just showing you how it is that we work out. It's pretty objective, how it is that we work out those points, yeah? And therefore, if it is that, and then you could plan ahead for those who are actually doing CAPE right now, you could plan ahead and figure out exactly where you are at and what you would want to do, yeah? So, so for example, and I have to move this screen a little bit, okay? So for our, we have listed the different programs that we offer um, in the faculty at the undergraduate level. So you have chemical and process engineering as offered by the chemical, de chemical engineering department as well as petroleum geoscience. We have civil engineering and civil with environmental engineering. So those are two separate programs. We have electrical and computer engineering. We have mechanical engineering, mechanical engineering with mine and biosystems. Industrial engineering, those three are offered by the mechanical engineering department. We also have geomatics engineering and land management that is offered by the geomatics engineering department. And um, so those just to give you an idea as to what we have, the number of points for entry into chemical engineering is 13. And even for petroleum ge geoscience as it stands right now is 13. For civil engineering, um, and these are subject to change, huh? but for, as it stands right now, civil engineering is seven, for electrical and computer engineering is eight, mechanical is eight, geomatics is six, and land management is five. So to work out those points, if it is, for example, okay, first off, each Cape grade is given a number of points. So the higher the grade, the greater number of points. So Cape grade one, you'll get five points, two, four, three, three, four, two, and five, one. So on this example, if it is that you did keep physics unit one and you got a three, right? You would have gained three points. And then if you did keep physics unit two and you gained a two, you would gain four points. So on average for your physics grade, you would have gotten 3.5 points. Similarly, if you had done pure math one and two, you have gotten five points if you had gotten a grade of one in unit one and a grade of two in unit two, you'd have gotten four points. So on average, you'd have gotten 4.5 points. And because, for example, electrical and computer engineering, we look at physics and pure math, both unit one and two in both subjects. When we add up those two average values, one for physics and one for math, we'll get a total of eight points. So this person with this qualification profile would get into electrical and computer engineering, of course, subject to the demand for the course. There was a year I can remember that yes, the minimum threshold was eight, but there were so many applicants that we had to raise it to 8.5.
because we have a limited number of spaces that we could fill, yeah? All right, so that's just to give you an idea. So if it is that you work out your grades and they fall below below that threshold, you know, tech, you will not get into, will not get direct, you will not get direct entry into our program, right? So before I know some students, some persons here may be wondering, okay, so what is this engineering? For me to talk about pre-engineering, you know, give you a sense of what engineering is about. And I and it's just a very, very brief, it doesn't cover every detail of engineering, just a brief taste of what it is. And essentially, and this comes from, let me go back again. This comes from, I'm trying to move this screen around. Right. So this comes from um, Britannica, and that's a definition. And the key thing about this is the application of science, the optimum conversion of the resources of nature to the uses of humankind, right? So the main thing we do is design, we build, we test, sometimes we maintain, we analyze um, systems and, and, and so on. For our use for certain functions, we analyze not just systems as in um, tangible per se, we may have processes also that we look at. And of course, we cover a number of disciplines and one thing is, even though we talk about disciplines, they may be multidisciplinary, they may be overlap in some of the things that we do cover. So even if you are in, for example, um, mechanical and um, mechanical engineering, there are some things that you have to cover in electrical. And if you're in electrical, you have to still do some things that we do in mechanical. And there are some subjects that everybody has to do. Yeah, so for example, your math-based has to be strong. There's some foundational math that is com common to all disciplines. Yeah. So I just I will not go through in detail um, what these different departments do or what their programs cover, but I want you to take a note of the link below, um, the sta.ue.edu.slash chemical and so on. The main stem is sta.ue.edu slash eng. And every department is listed and every department describes its own program, the best way they think they should, and what the different um, pro, faculty, um, the qualifications and so on, yes? So they give you an idea as to what they do, yes? So, so I just skip through that because I know we are limited for time, but we do have chemin, civil, electrical and computer engineering, mechanical, industrial, mechanical, biosystems, geomatics, right? And land management. So let me go to what is really the heart of what we need to do today. So the pre-engineering program, there are a number of aims, right? So we want to provide, as we mentioned before, an alternative path for potential regional candidates to BSc programs offered by the Faculty of Engineering at UE. Effectively prepare and hopefully motivate students for success in the BSc engineering program. So we don't just want to get you in, we want you to do exceedingly well, yes? We want to raise all students to and exceed the equivalent of CAPE level two, the benchmark entry qualification for entry to BSc engineering programs. And expose students, and I think this is one of the um, main points for pre-engineering, and it's a very major factor actually for any student matriculating into UE, is to expose students to the breadth and depth of university life and make them better prepared for the rigors of student life. Yes? So I know some people will be in the, what we call the value of decision at some point, and you have before you, you at CSEC, for example, and you have before you, do I go on to Cape? Do I do, pre-engineering, um, what are the pros and cons? Um, and of course, everybody has their own, has his own um, set of circumstances that they have to weigh. So I will just present to you some thoughts, um, may not be the most comprehensive list. And uh, um, yeah, so pre-engineering is a one year program. Okay, so you start the academic year in September. And let's say, for example, if you're coming in for next this academic year coming in, you call it academic year 2024, 2025. So it spans 
sept, from September of 2024, well, technically August 2024, up to August of 2025, all right? So it's one year. CAPE is two years, right? The tuition as it stands right now um, is 15,000, but it is covered by GATE. It is covered by GATE. Of course, you will have your means tests and so on, and that you will have to sort out with GATE in terms of what you qualify for, but it is covered by GATE. Um, if you do get into an A-level program with one of our um, secondary schools and so on, I believe typically it's free. So you have to consider that. <clears throat> so pre-engineering, you have an early UE immersion, all right? So you get exposed to the culture, the processes, the teaching and learning environment, all right? So we do some things, certain things online, we work in labs and so on. The expectation of you, the behavior we expect, you start to get accustomed to what our expectations are in this in this space yeah um for cape when you complete the two years well just as you enter undergraduate you have to orient to UV life yes and that could take an adjustment especially with the bsc workload which could be kind of tough especially in engineering yes the pre-engineering program is designed specifically for entry into engineering but it is well-rounded, yes? So when we designed the pre-engineering program, it was we looked at what we want our graduates, what we want our students to be like coming in, who we want to teach, essentially, um, what kind of knowledge they ought to have that will make it easier for them to work through the curriculum at the undergraduate level. And so we have um, mathematics. So we do the basics, mathematics, physics, chemistry, but we also have introduced things that we think will provide a more rounded engineer or lead to a more rounded engineer, give you a better or wider perspective. So we talk about in there as a course that deals with entrepreneurship <clears throat> and innovation. There's another course that deals with the intro to social sciences because our engineering solutions don't just exist in a on their own in a space. They are to serve people. And we have to know what their needs are. You have to understand people. And that helps us in that sense. Um, there's also, um, just move this around again, engineering graphics. So definitely that's a must for people who have to do mechanical, but everybody does it. Well, unless you're doing chemeng, we split the curriculum in that way. And then we have intro to workshop technology where you get an exposure to all the departments. Even if you are going into, you have a particular department in mind that you want to go, the particular engineering program you want to go into, we still have you be exposed to all the other departments, see how they run, what they do. Yes? Okay, if you don't get that experience entirely, it tends to be very generic. However, the upside for it, there's a, a possible access to full-blown government scholarships. But then again, that could be offset by the um the the the, the possibility of getting gate funding for pre-engineering. Okay. So advancing, continued so things to think about. <clears throat> so for pre-engineering, you have access to engineering lab facilities. So some labs. Um, are run in actual labs that we do for undergrad, um, depending, again, on, but there, there may be constraints in terms of equipment and timetabling, but nevertheless, you can have access to those labs. In addition to which, we the teaching staff, some of the teaching staff that we have teach in the pre-engineering program also teach at the undergraduate level. So for example, this year, I'm also teaching physics, which I, and I also teach at the undergraduate level. There's another um, lecturer he teaches in the chemical engineering department, undergraduate, he also teaches pre-engineering. So you see them in pre-engineering and you also see them in the undergraduate. So that's part of acclimatizing you to the environment. And one big plus is that as it stands right now, once you meet the threshold for entry set for pre-engineering for your um, threshold, the pre-engineering threshold for entry for your department of choice, you are guaranteed a spot in that. You know, there's no if about it. So if it is that the threshold is X 
and human nutrition for excellent department of choice based on your pre engineering GPA, you are guaranteed a spot apart, apart from everybody else who's coming in. All right, on Cape side, um, some schools have resource challenges. And we know, for example, especially for some science subjects and so on, access to lab facilities may be challenging. And therefore, um, that may impact the, the, um, the subjects that you have available to you at Cape. Yes, so some required subjects for entry may not be offered at your school. And there are some subjects that really do need that those lab facilities. Example, chemistry, physics, they definitely need lab facilities for you to actually handle and work through practically what the theory and what um to support the theory that you're learning in the classroom. Okay. So how am I seeing this again? I'm going backwards. All right. So you may be wondering, right? So how do we enter this program called um pre-engineering? So we have the traditional route is that those who did not really make the cut at Cape, let's say they didn't get the maybe number of points that was required that were required for entry um, using the Cape grade. Um, you can use those for entry into pre-engineering to sharpen your skills a little more so that you make it a little better for you to survive in our undergraduate program. So we look at a grade four minimum, right? In unit one and two in mathematics and unit one and two in physics. So if it is that you didn't make like three or two and you have four in your profile, definitely consider pre-engineering. Um, there are those who may have come in with a, have a technical diploma but did not meet the threshold where the GPA is concerned, um, you could also consider pre-engineering. We also accept students straight from CSEC, all right? So this is a CSEC profile that we're looking at. We, you must have, English and mathematics. And these are the minimum grade levels that you have three in English, two in mathematics, all right? You must have additional mathematics, minimum of grade three. You must have physics, minimum of grade three. And you must have chemistry, minimum of grade three. So these are the five subjects we are looking for from you and minimum of grade three except maths so with the minimum is grade two, okay? So you could come in straight from CSEC, do one year of pre once you meet those um, qualification entry points and go straight after you, if you're successful in your pre-engineering program, you could go to that just one year and you could go directly into the undergraduate program. If it is that you already have done CAPE or at least, you know, may not have done so well, you could still come through and do that year in pre-engineering and coming through that point. So what, what do we offer? What are the courses? I had given you a clue, but these are the specific courses that we offer for pre-engineering. Mm -hmm. Every course through Universe has a course code. Um, and that's one of the things you have to get accustomed to is that you need to know the name of the course that you have signed up for, but you need to have an idea what the course code is. So we have pre-engineering maths one, physics one, chemistry one. Then I told you about that innovation technology and entrepreneurship course. Those are four courses you're gonna do in semester one. Then you're gonna do our next four courses in semester two. This is where you're gonna start branching off. So everybody's gonna do pre-engineering maths two. Everybody's gonna do pre-engineering physics two. But if it is that you're doing chemical engineering, if you decide at this point you want to, your heart is set, you want to do chemical engineering, you will, you will have to choose pre-engineering chemistry too. Everybody else will have to do fundamentals of engineering graphics, right? And then everybody also does um, introduction to social sciences and humanities. So that would be four courses in semester two. Now, some people think, well, we finished those two, summer is a breeze, not really. We have two compulsory courses in summer and summer, and that would be pre-engineering maths three, as well as the intro to workshop technology. Um, so those are mandatory. So your schooling goes really from September, well, when teaching starts in September, right down into August. Yes, so your results actually come out after, during the summer. It does not come out in the, come out in summer, all right? 
And uh, you may, I think I have a note here, but this is the screen control is covered. All right, so one thing to note, once you are signed up for pre-engineering and you are using pre-engineering as your entry call for the undergraduate program, you must pass all courses comprised in the pre-engineering program, right? So it's not a buffet. You could do this one and that one and decide to mix with a cape and so on. If you're using pre-engineering as a qualification at all, you have to complete the pre-engineering certificate and get all courses, pass all courses, yeah? To be considered for entry using that qualification. And just to let you know, these are the GPA thresholds that you need to achieve um, after you've gone through the year and you're looking at your different grades and so on, right? So for chemical and chemical and process engineering, as well as petroleum geoscience, you need to have a, a 3.5 GPA coming all from your pre-engineering qualification, civil and civil engineering, civil and envi, we call it in short, that would be 2.5, electrical, 2.5, geomatics, 2.0, industrial, mechanical, mechanical and mining and biosystems will be 2.5, and land management will be 2.0, right? So these are the thresholds that you have to meet. So after you have completed the pre-engineering um, program or courses pass, once you have met the GPA at this level, you are guaranteed this, a spot in the program, in your program of choice. Yeah. So that will be it for me in terms of talking about the program. What I would like to say, I know some, some would have already, some persons would have already um, started up applying. Um, what we want you to, what we want you to do please complete your application. So they submit an application, but they don't upload all the documents required. You need to upload all your documents, okay? And even, and your qualifications, they must be notarized, right? So even though you're uploading an online, uploading those things online, they must be notarized copies of the, um, of the qualifications, okay? So I'll stop at this point. And Thank you very much, Dr. Adams. Um, we have a lot of questions coming in for you. <laughs> that period. So we're going to go straight into it. I think you piqued everyone's interest with all this information. And it was good information because now at least we know about the point system. We know about gate, things that people really want to know before they sign up. So right. Alex, Lisa was asking about the introduction to social sciences course. Mm -hmm. um, what exactly is, is like, what exactly is it, is it about the introduction to social sciences? She was asking that. Can you give um, a little insight? Okay, I let me see if I could pull up the um uh ready on hand the syllabus. Hold on for a second, huh? Oops. Sure. Or you could just tell her in terms of um she, she wanted okay, to I don't, the I don't want to give topic her. being covered. There's so many things going on, so I don't want to give her the wrong information here. Hold on for a second, please. Eh? No problem. Anyone want to feel another question? I'll, sure. I'll get so while we'll come back to Alex's question, we have another one. Is there any possibility, Susan wants to know, is there any possibility for a scholarship after completing the first year program, the pre-engineering program? Are there possibilities for scholarship is what Susan wants to know. I have not known of any um, so far, no. Um, not at this stage. But in the engineering program, we do have scholarships that persons can apply for. Um, not really. We do have prize awards. Um, okay. So essentially, depending on the performance of students at the end of the year, they do get cash cash prizes. Okay. Um, on, but in terms of pre-engineering, at this stage, no. Excuse me for a second, please. Sure. So we have several questions here. Uh, Go ahead. Even, sure. Even yeah. after that question, uh, Dr. Adams, we have someone is saying, Good evening, Miss. I'm in upper six right now, and I would like to do mechanical engineering. And right. I have physics, just not the maths. I signed mm -hmm. up for N1 maths. Should I do the N1 maths or the pre-engineering program? If you, How well did you do in physics? If you could give me an idea. Depending on how well you did in physics, I would suggest, if you did really well in physics, I would suggest that you go the N1 route. Because all you okay. would have to do, at least from my understanding, you'll just have to do the math. And then what will happen at that stage, you will apply to engineering and the person on the entry entrance committee mm -hmm. will assess 
both the pre-science um, qualifications, the math qualifications, as well as the K qualification. Okay, well, I think that should answer the question. Uh, yeah. Kathy, and also, we have Kathy, and here she wants to know, if you use the GATE funding for the pre-engineering program, would GATE still be able to cover the BSc in engineering, or you'll only yes. be able to? Yes, yeah? so as it stands right now, you get GATE for both pre-engineering as well okay. as the undergraduate program. That's very good. Um, I think Anderson is asking, what is the threshold for the pre-engineering course? I'm not sure if that, that question is clear. So, sorry, it's Andaline. What is the threshold? Andaline, uh, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. Maybe you can ask it another way. Yes. Dr. Adams, she was asking what the threshold for the course. The threshold. So when you say threshold at the input or threshold at the output? So if it is the threshold at the input, I think I shared with you the entrance qualifications required for pre-engineering. If you come in straight with CSEC or if you come in through the Cape route, right? So for CSEC, you need to have English at, at least grade three, math at least grade two, physics at least grade three, chemistry at least grade three, and maths at least grade three. Yes? Okay, I think um, Andali tried to qualify the question. And when she said threshold, she was referring to the GPA. GPA. GPA threshold for the pre-engineering program. Andaline, let me know if I got that question correct, if that's what you want us to... At the output? If it's at the output, mm -hmm. um, it means that, okay, after you have done your GPA, after you, sorry, after you have done your pre-engineering um, program, like you did all the, all the courses, all the 10 courses, such credits, and you work out the grade, did work out the actual grade point average based on your performance in all these courses, Mm -hmm. That value, how that value will be, um, if it exceeds the threshold or is at the threshold for the department you want to go in, you will get in. So if it has, okay. let's say you worked out, you wanted to get into electrical and computer engineering, and based on the performance in pre engineering, your total GPA based on the performance throughout the entire pre engineering program sums up to, let's say, 2.6 as a GPA, you will get entry. Okay. All right. I think that answers it. Uh, Zaheer wants to know for the pre-engineering course, would doing pure mathematics at CAPE level be necessary? For the pre-engineering course during CAPE? Okay, so if you are coming through, so here's the question, and that's why I did the pros and cons, right? Because mm -hmm. there are reasons why people do CAPE, yeah? Mm -hmm. um, if you are already committed to CAPE, yes? Mm -hmm. I would, this is my advice now. Yeah. I would suggest that you complete it. Yes? So yeah. if you do pure math, if you already did pure math one, um, I would say go ahead and do pure math two. two. Right. Yeah? Make yeah. sure and complete it because you already committed a year at least to the K program. Mm -hmm. However, again, I want to reiterate that you can come into pre-engineering without doing K. Okay. Yes? Yeah. So that you have the CSEC yeah. Okay, Doc. Um, Marcus wants to know, he said he's interested in electrical engineering, but he's seeing electrical and computer engineering and he wants to make sure it's, it's the same thing. Yes, it is. And actually, I did have a couple of slides telling, showing you what it is that we do um, in electrical and computer engineering. It's on your website in full details, but um, about, I don't want to come across bias because that is the department I'm in. Um, although I'm I'm doing pre engineering on behalf of the faculty, but in terms of the where I where's my substantive position in terms of teaching, I teach in electrical and computer engineering, uh -huh. and yes, we have um we deal with communication systems, energy systems, so like a power transmission and so on. We deal with electronics, uh -huh. control systems, computer systems integration. We look at that as well. So there is okay. a mix of software as well as hardware. Okay. Well, our team could also put the link to the website in the chat. So for those of you who want to click and get more information, we'll provide that link shortly. Another question from Andaline. Are the faces mm -hmm. online? Are the classes online? Sorry, or face to face? Okay. So when um it is they are uh, we follow the mandate of the university system. And as it stands right now, mm -hmm. and given all the circumstances, they are face to face. Yes, there was a time that we had to do it all online because of COVID, 
but now as that has phased out as we as we suppose um we are face to face so we do we run labs those are face to face tutorials face to face classes face to face exams face to face everything is face to face as it's okay. Right. okay however what i would want to say is that some of our courses do run Although they're substantively face to face, that does not stop us from having some of our delivery done sometimes online. So blended stuff going on. So for example, okay. when I teach, I also do hybrid. So sometimes yeah. students do online, sometimes students are being class. Yeah, I think that's a general consensus. Uh, another question: Are all the components for this program completed on the UE campus site at St. Augustine? As it stands right now, yes. Okay. Uh, a question. I, if, I, hope I, I hope I understood that question correctly. But... I, I, I think you did. I think you did. <laughs> All right. Uh, if a student did not do admat ad and chem at CSEC, mm -hmm. does that mean that they can't apply? I would not, I would not advise you to because your application will be denied. Okay. All right. Uh, Zubair, I'm not sure exactly what you're asking. You're going to have to ask it to us another way with regards to the comment you made about grade two. And we have, oh, oh look, she said the question was answered. Another question we have from Darius. I am in upper six presently. If I didn't do any math at Cape level, but it's physics, biology, and chemistry, should mm -hmm. I apply for pre-engineering or just N1 maths? All right. So again, um, I would suggest, okay, so a couple of things. That you have to really do some soul searching <laughs> and really determine if it is that you want to do engineering. That's the first step, right? The next thing, you have a couple of options. So yes, as you are already committed, yes, you're doing CSEX, you do, you, you said you're in upper six, you're doing those courses, you're doing physics, mm -hmm. chemistry and biology, fine. All right, so you could, yes, you could do the N1 math, but uh, the question is, do you have ad math at CSEC? That's the question. Because if you do if you do have ad math at CSEC, and provided that you have the requisite grades for physics and chemistry, you can do pre-engineering. Yeah, but it's just that you will be doing physics again in pre-engineering. And you will be doing chemistry so you will be doing chemistry again as it stands right now. Yeah. So yeah. you have to really decide if it is that you want to do engineering. If you want to do engineering, do the pre-engineering route. If not, well, if you're not too sure, I would say do the N1 math. Yeah. Okay. I'm seeing some questions here. And again, guys, feel free if you want us to hear your voice. We want to hear from you. We want to engage with yeah. you. So let us know. Um, even those that we don't get to this afternoon, we'll, we'll get back to you. And Trisha, I'm seeing your comment here, and we really want to help you and get back to you. So I've asked the team, maybe can you put your email address, and this is for Trisha Miller, put your email address in the chat, and our team will read the comment, and we will make sure and email you this week, and at least be able to follow up and check on things for you. So that's um, a... Yeah, Ms. sorry. Mataki, I know I want to just go back to the person who asked about suicide. Yeah, sure. I just want to, so I don't know if I can share my screen again. Hold on. Eh? Uh -huh. Well, yeah. while you do that, let me just go through here to see. Yeah. While you do that, let me ask another okay. question. Right. Yeah. So just, so I hope you're seeing it right now. Oh, so I think, this, yeah, we've seen it. Yeah, go ahead. This is the syllabus for that, the, the course outline, I should say. So the suicide course. So basically, uh -huh. these are some of the things that they do. So uh -huh. I don't know if that will help the person who asked. Yes. Yeah, hopefully they'll be able to see. Um, are you seeing this? I hope. Yes, we are. We're seeing it clearly. Right. So basically that will give you an idea. Uh, so this is, and lecturers have to follow, who teach this course, who have to follow this course all the time. So okay. those are the things you have to cover, right? Okay. Okay. Next okay. question. <laughs> yeah. So we have a lot of questions here. Um, You mentioned gate for the students from Trinidad. But yeah. what about... Just now, just so now. From the Caribbean. Yeah, that's exactly what the question is. Yes. Ah, well, I can only account for gate here. Um, yeah. I think those who are uh from the other Caribbean territories, they will have to work out funding arrangements with their um, perspective, with their um, with their 
respective governments. And, okay. there, may be, and there may be things available. I'm, I'm yes, not they will have to do some that. research. Yes, they will have to do some research on that. All right, we have another question here. If you got the required grades in Form 6, Maths and Physics, but a bad grade in example, Environmental Science, would it affect your chances of getting into pre inch It should not. It depends on what your grades were for maths and physics, right? So this is our cape, I'm, I'm, I'm assuming. And I if you assume, have, yeah. right? And if it is that you have, and, and is this for entry into pre-engineering or for the undergraduate program? If it's for pre-engineering, it's just like you have to have a, a grade above at four or above. Yes? Right. Um, pre-engineering. Yeah, so okay. yeah, I think that answers it. Susan is asking for us to send the QR code. Um, so we could probably try and get Susan's information and send off that inf send off that information for her specifically. Okay. With regards to some other questions, we have my son, and this is from Maxwell. My son did keep applied and pure maths, keep physics with fives, but was not successful in CSEC chemistry when he did CSEC, but he wants to do electrical engineering. So okay. he's kind of asking for, for some advice. His son did CAPE, applied on pure maths, and CAPE okay. physics, and he got five, but was not successful in CSEC chemistry when he did CSEC. All and, right. Yeah, so what can he do? All right, so for, for I will tell you, for electrical, for entry into electrical, you need to have pure math one and pure math two, as well as um, physics one and physics two. And again, according to the point system, you have to get at least eight points, right? Now for, based on having size, definitely you will not get into electrical directly. Now, I even for entering to pre-engineering, there may be some challenges there, but we can look at his profile at the O level, um, CSEC O level, um, the challenge though is that he doesn't have chemistry. So he will, for entry into pre-engineering, it is a must that you have to have chemistry, all right? So once he gets that chemistry um, qualification and provided that the other subjects are covered, so the ad maths, the physics, the English, the maths, um, at the requisite grades, he can consider entry into pre-engineering. Okay, so Max, well, I hope that answers your question. I know you had your hand up. And we're going up PAC here. So I hope that answers your question. And to make sure that we get all the questions answered, because we only have about 10 minutes or so, if so much again, we will put in the chat um, uh, an email address that you could email all your queries to, and our team would make sure and respond to each one. So it's probably there already, and we'll just put it again for everyone to see if you have any questions about the program. You're not sure, because there are a lot of questions, and we want to make sure that we can answer them so that you can apply because our application cycle has opened since January and it's going to finish on July 31st. So we want to make sure you get your applications in. We're going to put our email address that you could email and ask any question you may have on the pre-engineering program. We're going to put it in the chat so that even if we don't have time to get here this afternoon, but we're going to make a valiant effort. We hope that you contact us and we're going to get to you in a short space of time. Um, we have some more questions here, Doc. In terms of the entry for petroleum geoscience, what is the entry and the pre-qualifications for that? Okay, so I don't want to misquote that one. So I have to go back to the faculty um, handbook for that. And you know what would be a good one? You know, it would be a good thing to share with them, um, Ms. Kerr? Yeah. With the actual faculty handbook. I think we put that in earlier, but we can put it again. Yes, because if you go there, every single department uh -huh. is listed there would be their set of entry requirements. And petroleum geoscience is a bit unique because they ask for yeah. combinations. So yeah. electrical and computer engineering is very straightforward, right? It's physics, one and two, yeah. math, one and two. And similarly for other departments. But for petroleum geoscience, there are combinations of subjects that you can do in okay. terms of how you word it. So you have to read the faculty handbook and I don't want to misguide you where that is concerned. Okay, so we, we did post the faculty handbook, the link and we'll repost it again. Another question, do all qualifying applicants compete among each other for selection based on grades or do you accept all qualifying applications? Based on from pre-engineering, I can speak for pre-engineering. Pre-engineering, yeah. Yes, yes. As I said, as I said, as it stands now, once you have made, listen, because you have chosen pre-engineering, 
you are essentially, you have already made a commitment, so to speak, to engineering. And therefore, we make a commitment to you. Once you make the cut, once you make the grade, yes, that we have specified for entry that we think will allow you to perform well in the undergraduate program and you have made it, we say, listen, we are giving you that spot. All right. So once, as it stands right now, all the rules are laid out. Once you make the GPA required for that department, you are required, you are going to get a spot in here. If you don't make the GPA, well, you're not getting it. It's not right. necessary that you couldn't, it's not that you, you may not, well, that's what it that you're not going to get in. All right. There may be some considerations, but that's it. But if you make the cut, you will get it. You are guaranteed. Okay. More guarantee okay. that somebody will keep. Okay. Okay. Uh, what do you personally recommend? I feel I know the answer to, to, to this question, but Anthony is asking, what do you personally recommend as he qualifies for both the pre inch program and his school's key program for physics and pure math? So what do you think Anthony should do? Anthony, as a Ghana, one of the things we want, um, we don't we don't necessarily give you Okay, how, how, how best to answer this? You have to know, Anthony, your set of circumstances, right? So there may be not just, there may be time considerations or constraints. There may be financial constraints and other things to consider. Yeah, prospects. So I've listed for you the pros and cons that I th could think of at the time for pre-engineering and keep. Uh -huh. Now, if I tell you pre-engineering, obviously, I'll be biased, right? I, oh, we, I, we know you're biased. We know you're biased. <laughs> I would encourage you to do pre-engineering, but I'm trying to be as transparent as possible because CAPE may be the only possibility for some folks. Uh -huh. Yeah. So, again, consider the pros and cons that are listed in the presentation. Think about either, the either, um, either side of things. Um, You know your circumstances, financial, etc., and you come up with your... um decision and then when you make that decision you own that decision that's your decision and you feel comfortable with that you have no regrets after that you know what i mean sure. yes uh, we have another question here i am currently in cape unit one doing chemistry environmental science and biology should yeah. i do the pre inch after unit one or complete unit two and then do the pre inch program and i feel you're going to tell him to complete unit two yes, yeah. i think they already made it you're already yeah. in it um, the only problem is that she did, she's doing chemistry, environmental, and bio. So yeah, the, biology is a he as well. Yeah. He, but the problem is that two subjects that main subjects that are missing. Yes. So that's a, I mean. Maybe he came in late. Could just let him know the two main subjects that are missing. Right. So for engineering, typically, um, for all departments, like, um, would be physics and maths. Right, we need that okay. A levels A level equivalent for chemistry. We also want the chemistry at A levels. So, you have the if you go into the chemistry, you have the chemistry, but they don't have the pure, the uh, pure math slash applied math and physics. Right, so if you're already committed to the um, CAPE, you did unit one. The thing is, even if you do unit two for CAPE, you will not get into engineering based on that. Okay. You have to do both physics and math at some point. Yeah? Okay. Uh, when, hmm, sorry, sorry, Doc. <laughs> it's because of speed in here trying to get yeah, it. No, I understand. I'm understand. really <laughs> excited. We'd love to see the engagement. And I saw that our team, I saw Nikisha, and the team put the email address in the chat. So make sure and email us. If you're not clear on something, if maybe we didn't explain it to your clarification, send us an email. Our team yes. is eager and waiting to answer all your questions. So we have another question here, Doc. At mm -hmm. I'm currently doing biology, chem, and pure math. Would I be able to get into chemical engineering upon doing the pre inch program? Biology, so chem, and pure math. Bi biology, pure math, and chem. Um, what did you do? Biology, pure math, and chem. All right. Yeah. I'm not here in physics at all. Did you? I, I hope you did physics at all levels. If you did physics at all levels, you should get in. You should get in. It depends okay. again. Look at your entry. Look at your CSEC. And if you have all of those five at the requisite levels, you definitely will get into pre engineer. Okay. Um, Marcus had a question that I actually wanted to ask you myself. I did not do ad math at CSEC. I'm presently in upper six doing chem, 
physics and environmental science. I am also doing CSEC ad maths now. Do I have to wait for results to apply or can I apply now? Uh, I don't, uh, nothing stops you from applying, but you would have to indicate that you are still awaiting results. Yes, so it can, you have to let us know that you are still waiting because for example, people may still be in the CSEC doing, have to do CSEC come May, June, right? Mm -hmm. And still apply, right? So that we know that their results are pending. So we don't make a decision based on what they present right now. So the, the application will be on hold. Similarly, I believe there's some way in the application that you can indicate that you are waiting for results. Right. If we know that, we will not make a decision. If it is that you do see a decision come on the system, you, you need to contact um, student admissions and let them know that you are waiting results. And they will take, put a note on the system saying this person is waiting for results. And when your results do come in, the onus is on you to bring those results in. Yeah time for us to make a decision for you for entry for next semester okay yeah yeah thanks doc do you have to get documents notarized to send the documents for your application i think you yes. had mentioned that they earlier have to, they have to be notarized yes can you just explain how to get documents notarized because i know we we do notarizing here at the lloyd Braffitt administration building here we do it on campus here um oh, yeah but that's when people bring in their actual certificates and they actually see yeah. it um, but you can do it like by a JP, I think a commissioner of affidavit. You yes, do it correct. A, I think you could do a um I think I believe and I you could correct me on this one in terms of like a high school, um, I think your principal, I think, could be one to do it or something. Yeah. Like the, the most official route would be like Commissioner Affidavit, the um JP, right? Just or right here on campus, actually. Yeah. Um, one more question, because I think we have to come down to a close in a couple of minutes. Hi, good day. Is it possible for electronic and electrical technology at CSEC to be a substitute for ADMAT to enter pre-engineering, then follow into BSc electrical and computer engineering? As it stands right now, I'm sorry, we can't do that. We uh, listen, and I think this is something people underestimate. To do engineering is very math-based. It's right. very heavy on the math. And, and I mean, I'm not going to apologize for that. That's just how it is. If you want to do well in engineering, you have to have a very strong foundation in math. And if you notice any program that I specified for, um, laid out for you for pre-engineering, is a pre-engineering math one, two, and three. Those are three. And that's, the fact, is the emphasis is on math. Yeah? Okay. All right. Um, Aria is just asking for a little help. She said she came in a little late. So sorry. Just to confirm... You need ad maths at the CSEC level to get into the pre-engineering program yes. along with maths and physics. Yes, yes, yes. As well as chemistry and English. <laughs> as well as chemistry. So Aria, I hope you heard that. Um, I think we've answered most of the questions. And again, I see our team is working fast and furious here and making sure that we have all our links and we have the email addresses here so that in case you have any query at all, in case you know we didn't answer it, um, as as you as you would want, you can send us an email. And I have another question here from Marcus. What's the difference between the N one program and pre engineering in terms of admission into the BSc program? Okay, so I now the pre science program N one program is administered by the Faculty of Science and Technology. Right. They know all their entry requirements. I'm not too familiar with all of those, but I do know is that students from pre-science do come in to apply and get entry into the Faculty of Engineering. Okay. Yes? Okay, yeah. So I see um, some of our registrants have been leaving their email addresses and our Inch team is right there. Um, we have all the information so if they want us to contact you about something specific, we are here for you. We want to make sure that you come on board our beautiful St. Augustine campus from September 2024 and even beyond, because this session is not just for those who want to sign up now, maybe you're thinking about it next year. And this is the time where you ask your questions to make sure you're exactly, you know, you know what you have to do. You have Dr. Adams here as a captive market so she can answer all your questions online. We know she's quite passionate about her area. We know she's biased, but she's supposed to be because that's where <laughs> she thinks that she is actually the coordinator for the pre-engineering program. So she is the person who has most, if not all, of the answers. Um, our team is just reiterating our links and our email addresses here. 
Thanks, Maxwell. We got to the email address. And of course, we have all these things archived in the chat. So I hope that our session today was very informative from your responses. I think it was very informative. I'd like to thank Dr. Adams for taking time out of her very busy schedule because she has been teaching all day. And she actually was able to just spare some moment to come on board and to come online and answer all your questions. Delight. I would have loved to hear some of your voices, but that's okay. <laughs> but that's okay. At least we got most of the questions. And additionally, we have our open days coming up on April 13th and 14th. So you could check us out on our social media platforms and sign up to attend one day or the two days for our open days. That's on Saturday the 13th and Sunday the 14th of April, where our engineering faculty will actually have a booth on the quadrangle in campus. You could come and talk to the team, talk to our team who's here in the chat, talk to Dr. Adams, talk to all the persons there. And you could actually have a conversation with them and ask them all your questions face to face. So sign up for our open day. You could either come on the Saturday or the Sunday, or you could even come both days. You can bring your entire family, we have activities for the children. It's going to be a day of fun. That's April 13th and 14th. So come and ask. You could come sit down with them if you want a half hour with Dr. Adams, a whole hour. You can come on any one of those days. I'm putting on this spot here. And you could ask the team questions about our pre-engineering program and any of our engineering programs and any of our other programs, as a matter of fact, here at the University of the West Indies, St. Augustine. So again, Thank you for joining us. I hope the session was informative and we will be in contact with you soon. Thank you again for attending our ARCS UE session. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Doc.